Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And finally, we have James Brasser with us again. And today, he is going to enlighten us on Gemini Astrology, the principles and the Karakas. And he will also be showing it uh, using example charts. Welcome to Exotic Astrology. And he will also be demonstrating us Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. Yes, yes, yes. You heard it right, the outer planets, which is not much discussed in Vedic Astrology. So today we will hear from him. Welcome to Exotic Astrology once again. Thank you very much and please enlighten us. Thank you. First, before I start, I want to mention uh, two books. Um, not Jaimini, but typical Parashara Astrology. I mention this book a lot in my uh, lessons. But this book is going to be on ebook probably in December this year, 2018. I went through the book. This is the book. This was my second book. My first book was Ancient Hindu Astrology for the Modern Western Astrologer, and that was the introductory book. 20 years later, I wrote this book, which gives you the um, instead of the theory and instead of just repeating what everybody says, after 20 years of experience, I wrote this book to tell you which techniques work and which ones don't work so well. So I, that, was that was done in the year 2000. 18 years later, I went through it again for the ebook, and again, I updated it with more information. So that should be up around probably mid-December. This book here, later on in today's session, I'm going to be talking on, on Western, well, the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And this is one book, How to Be a Great Astrologer, which is all about the Western aspects. It's not all of Western astrology, but it's got Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto in their aspects. Okay, so you asked me to speak about Jaimini. I am not an expert in Jaimini. I'm just going to give you the basics, the same way that I got the basics. You know, we all like to experiment. I do use Jaimini when I do updates. In other words, when I do a regular astrology reading, I, it takes about an hour to an hour and a half, and I go over the whole natal horoscope. Then I go into dashas and buktis. Then I go into Hindu transits for about four years. Then I go into Western transits and progressions. And then I'm done. After people ask questions, then I'm done. But when people come back a year or two later and they want an update, they just want to know about the future, not the natal chart and future stuff, but just the update. When I do an update, I look at the dashas and buktis and the Hindu transits, the Western transits, the Western progressions. But I also look at the Jaimini system because that, you know, that gives me a little bit more information. My introduction to Jaimini came at a conference, I believe it was 1993, when K.N. Rao came to America. And according to what he said, <clears throat> K.N. Rao was sitting on a train he was, in, he was on a train uh, that was going on for four or five hours, train ride in India, and across the way from him was a father telling his son all about the Jaimini system, and K.N. Rao absorbed it. He listened to it, he absorbed it, then he came to America and taught a little bit. And when he did my chart, there was an experience, I've mentioned this before, on certain interviews. I had gotten married the second time. My first marriage was 1975. I was divorced in 1979. And then I got married in 1993. And there was nothing in the Western chart that indicated that I would be getting married. There was nothing in the Hindu chart that indicated that I was going to get married, but I was engaged. I got engaged around, I don't know, the summer or the fall 
1992. I told people that in January, I drew a chart, uh, which is in my book, The Art and Practice of Ancient Hindu Astrology. We picked a chart where to get married, where Venus and Moon was in the seventh house conjunct, aspected by Jupiter in Pisces. It was a wonderful chart. But anyway, before, you know, after I got engaged, but before the marriage, I got a phone call from Richard Hauck. He's an astrologer who wrote uh, two or three books on Hindu astro astrology. One was called The Astrology of Death. Anyway, he called me up before the marriage, a couple months before the marriage, and he said, James, you're not getting married. I said, what do you mean? He said, there's nothing in the horoscope anywhere. And I said, I know. I know. I, there's nothing there that is strong for marriage, but I'm getting married. He said, you're not getting married, and he laughed. Then I got married, 1993, January, got married. I've been married now 25 years. But there was nothing in the horoscopes. That, that was January 93. In November, December 93 was when I met K.N. Rao, and he did my horoscope. And I said, I said, you know, I got married early this year, early in 1993. And I said, is there anything in the chart? He says, yes, yes, it's right there. It's right there. And I thought, oh, he's just saying that. But no, he was not just saying that. After I learned the system, it turns out that I had entered a Libra period. And in my horoscope, and so Libra started in October of 1991, and it went until October 2001. As soon as I got to October 1991, I started having very serious relationships, one or two, and then in 93, I was married. So what had occurred was that, first of all, I entered Libra Dasha. And in Germany, the, the signs are more important. It's not a planetary Dasha system. It's not the Mars Dasha or the Jupiter Dasha. It's Aries Dasha, Taurus Dasha, Gemini. So the signs are a little bit more important. And this was the sign of Libra, which is relationships. But Libra, in my horoscope, holds the marriage indicator. The marriage indicator is the planet in the earliest degree of a sign. So I had the sign of Libra, which is relationships, and I had the planet, the Karaka for marriage, which in my case was Mercury. And it's Mercury because it's in the earliest degree, becomes the marriage indicator. So it was clear. And so I've, I've always used that story to tell how this is why astrology is so hard. And you, you, you really, we really have to be able to acknowledge when we cannot see something in the horoscope. There was nothing in that horoscope indicating marriage. Now, if I take that to five or 10 astrologers, most of them will make something up. Oh, I see it. It's from this little blah, blah, blah. Oh, I see it from this little blah, blah, blah. And they, they make things up. But the truth is, there's plenty of times when the events occur and we can't find them. But part of the reason we can't find them is because sometimes they exist in another system of astrology. For example, if you're, if, you know, Hindu astrologers generally don't use Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Now, in India, some of them do. In the West, they keep it very pure and very, you know, they consider Jyotish to be kind of religious, so they won't use Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. But some do, and in India, some will use. But if you don't use Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto just in your astrology, you will miss huge, so much will be missed. But the Jaimini system also sometimes will give information. Now, the, the, the Jaimini system I do not consider to be as good as the Parashara system. Parashara is way more uh, utilized. Most people use Parashara. And then when they get a little bored or a little tired, they start looking into the other systems. Some people do use Jaimini exclusively, but, but not, not so many. Okay, and, 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 and then I'll tell you another story. Uh, my, my son, we've got my son's a horoscope. When my son reached the age of, uh, 
let's see, what was it? When my son came to the Gemini Dasha at seven years old, he didn't, I didn't teach him astrology until he was maybe 12 or, or, or 13. I taught him astrology. And when I told him a little bit of Jaimini, and I said, look how bad your Gemini Dasha is. He said, that's it. When I hit seven years, it was the, the grade of school. that he, he said, everything became difficult and bad and terrible. He hated the Gemini Dasha. And you'll see why when I show it to you. Um, it's a funny story, by the way. The way that I taught him astrology, I figured he probably doesn't, doesn't care, doesn't want to learn. But I wanted him to learn. And he was always wanting computers and iPads and iPhones. And he always wanted something that would cost several hundred dollars. So I said to him, I said, you know, if you, you want extra, he wanted extra, um, I don't know, what do they call it? Gigabytes. or He wanted his iPad to be bigger, more powerful. I said, I'll give you that if you give me seven weekends, each Saturday and Sunday, for one hour on Saturday and Sunday for seven weekends, I will teach you some astrology and then you can have your, your extended iPad, you know, computer data, whatever it was. He said, okay. By the time the seven weeks was up, I was tired. I was glad it was over. But then every weekend after that, he said, daddy, what about, what about astrology? Daddy, what about astrology? So we kept going and he really came to love it. Anyway, okay, so let's put up the, um, and then by the way, uh, when, it, when it would be time to put him to bed, he, he never wanted to go to bed. He would start asking me questions about the Navamsha and the Ashtaka Varga and questions that even my students don't ask, he'd be asking. Okay, so let's first talk about the Karakas. So do you want to put this uh, up on the screen? Yeah, I, I'm just doing that. Okay. Where there are three rows, right? That, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll just share the screen. Yeah, are you able to see this? Yeah, I'll just uh, zoom this in. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll talk about the Karakas uh, first. Um, so the way the Karakas work is based on the, the degrees, the higher the degree and the lower the degree. We put the planets in the order of degrees from the highest degree to the lowest degree. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see my, the highest degree planet for me is the sun. The sun in my horoscope is in Virgo, and it's in 29 degrees. So that becomes the Atmakarika. Now, in, in, the para, in the Parashara system, the sun, they always consider the sun to be the Atmakarika simply because the sun is the ruler of the soul. But in Jaimini system, it depends on which planet is in the the highest degree. If you look at Julian underneath me, Mercury is in 28 degrees. That's the highest degree planet in his chart. So that becomes the Atmakarika. And in Parashara, you will oftentimes hear astrologers say they will borrow from Jaimini. They will say, oh, well, the sun is the, is the indicator of your soul, but also the planet in the highest degree. That's not Parashara. They are borrowing that from the Jaimini system. So in any case, the planet in the highest degree is the Atmakarika. So that planet, the sun, represents me. It represents me. It's like the, it's kind of like the first house of a chart. The planet in the second highest degree represents money because the second house is money. They will also take that, oftentimes they'll take that to be a career ruler as well because you're making your money there. But first and foremost, we'll say money. And then the third 
the planet in the third highest degree is like the third house, brothers and sisters, things like that, energy. So for me, that would be Venus. Uh, the fourth, now I have three planets in 14 degrees. Saturn's 1426, Mars is 14 degrees 10 minutes, and Jupiter's 1408. That's, that's rare. Most of the times people won't have two planets in the same degree. I've got three. Uh, they're in different signs, but they're still in those degrees. So the mother and land and homes would be Saturn in my horoscope. That would tell something about my mother or about land, homes, and real estate. The fifth is luck, because the best houses of a chart are the ninth house and the fifth house. So the fifth house, so my Mars would represent children, investments, fifth house matters, but they would also represent, it's a very, it's a, it's a good, it's a good, if, if, if you come to uh, the dasha of the planet that's in the fifth um, highest degree, that generally would be a lucky period. The sixth one is not good because the sixth, eighth, and twelfth houses are the bad houses. So the planet in the sixth is called Ganadi Karaka, and the Ganadi Karaka is usually bad. Now, I am not the expert on Jaimini, but I, so there are people that know about special Raja Yogas and things like that, but here I'm just giving you the basis, which is really all I, all I know, so I don't use it too extensively. But if I come to a dasha that is holding the planet Jupiter, so in, in my case, Jupiter is in Pisces. So you would think, oh, Jupiter in Pisces, that'll be a, when he comes to a Pisces dasha, that'll be a good dasha. But no, it turns out that when I have Jupiter Buktis, I, actually, I shouldn't say Jupiter Buktis. When I have a Jupiter, when I have a Pisces dasha, or a Pisces Bukti, because we're not having planets, we're having Pisces, 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 Aquarius, Pisces, Capricorn, and then after Pisces, Aquarius, 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 Capricorn, it goes like that. So Jupiter, in my case, is so afflicted. First of all, it's the Ganadi Karaka, and secondly, it has an aspect from Saturn, an exact aspect. So my Pisces Buktis and my Pisces dashas are you know terrible mercury is the planet in the seventh you know you have the highest degree second highest degree the so the seventh highest degree and that's the last one so that's the lowest degree mercury's in two degrees so mercury if i come to a dasha or a bukti of libra which when you see my horoscope you'll see that mercury is in libra so when i would hit my Libra periods, they would be oriented toward relationships. Okay, so in my in Julian's case, Mercury is the Atmakarika, the Sun, the Sun is in his ninth house, and and the Sun is his second, so it represents money. So he might make money, or he might have a career in religion, philosophy, or maybe in universities, higher knowledge. Right now, there's no chance. Of, <laughs> right now he's 20 years old and there's no chance of of him having an interest in religion and philosophy he just doesn't but he's an extremely good teacher and i could see him possibly teaching in a university and that would be because the sun represents it's the second in his case so it represents money and therefore career to some extent um and then venus is in the lowest degree. If you go to number seven, Venus is the lowest degree. And Venus, so that would be his marriage indicator. And Venus, in his case, is in the sign of Taurus. So when he comes to Taurus Dasha or Taurus Buktis, he can have relationships. Okay, so now let's look at the, um, actually, can you put up my horoscope? 